All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our uh, second undergraduate internship fair of the semester. Um, I wanted to welcome our guests. We have um, several agencies coming to talk with all of the students today. And thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking your time to talk with students. Um, so this will be the order um, in which we hear from our agencies today. We'll start with Hands to Help um, and then Hopeful Journeys. Um, we'll hear from Shed Children's Campus. Arts in Reach, and then um, Cedardale. So I am going to ask that um, people, if they have questions, I would love to be able to make sure um, you're able to ask those questions. So if you can put them in the chat, that would be ideal because then we'll be able to make sure people's questions are covered and I'm not missing anybody um, trying to raise their hand um, if I can't see them. So make sure to put those questions in the chat. We'll give some space and time after each um, person presents and allow for students to ask questions. And then also we'll have some time at the end um, to ask questions as well. So I am going um, to start with Elizabeth uh, Valdez, who is the Assistant Director of Hands to Help. Um, and I'd love to have you start and tell us about Hands to Help and internship opportunities for students. Thank you. Can I share my screen? Yes, you should be able to. If not, let me know, but you should be able to. All right, yes, I can. Thank you. Let me just present. Um, okay, hi everyone. So my name is Isabeth Valdez. I am the Assistant Director of Hands to Help. Um, so who, what is Hands to Help, right? So we are a community center uh, located in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Um, but before you go to Hands to Help, right? Before you come here, uh, it's very important for you to understand the city, the population that you're working with. Um, so we are a sanctuary city. Uh, which just means that there's a lot of immigrants here uh, from all over uh, Latin America and other countries. 80% um, of our population is Hispanic, um, Latino, and 80, uh, 80, um, 88, 78% um, speak uh, another language besides English, which is Spanish. Um, so, and the middle and house, uh, household income is 44,000. Now, the reason why I'm getting, giving you this data is not to give you a history lesson. The reason I'm giving you this data is for you to understand the population you're working with, but also the parents and the children, right? So the children are coming from predominantly, from homes that predominantly speak Spanish. Um, so sometimes the grammar might not be there, right? Sometimes, not sometimes, the reason why the parents bring the kids to our program, right? One is because it's free, it's a free service, and two, they need help. The kids need help with homework and the parents are unable to help them um, with the material, whether it's history, reading, or math, which can get a little complicated um, after a certain grade, right? Um, so as I mentioned, so we are a community uh, resource center, but also a drop-in center. So if someone comes in here while you guys are tutoring or helping the children, whatever it may be, um, uh, I'm the one that assists them. So as an inter, you, as an intern, you are. Um, a staff member, so you are expected to man down the office along with the other staff, right, while, while I'm not here, and manage the tutors, which I'll explain what your responsibilities are um, later on. Uh, but we offer after, sp after school programs, so that's, uh, that's our most uh, famous uh, program, but we also have grad fellows that assist uh, high school students apply to college, ESL, class <clears throat> ESL classes, but that's all pending. <laughs> budget, um, but we also offer um, entry level ESL classes, tax assistant uh, with, uh, with Merrimack, um, job preparation and resume building. Um, and any, most of the time it's just, oh, can you help me fill out this application? Or uh, can you help me translate this document? Um, and I don't, cause I don't know what it means, right? So sometimes I do need help of other staff members to help me with that because it can be a lot. Uh, but most of the times I can do it on my own. Um, another thing that we focus on is uh, giving referrals to other nonprofits because sometimes we're unable to help them and that's okay. 
Um, that's why we have a list of other local uh, nonprofits that can help them with that. So your knowledge is also very valued. So the tutoring program is, is, is from three to five. Um, and so it's one thing to be compassionate, but it's another thing to your, to let your actions speak for yourself, right? Um, so it's very important. You're not, run, you're not tutoring the kids, but you're not, you're helping the grad fellow, um, the grad fellows um, as, uh, manage the tutoring program along with other programs. But this runs Monday through Thursday. So it, it does take a chunk of our time and you know, after three weeks, we can get any work done because we're just doing a tutoring program. So, yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm not sure why it's not showing. Right here. I'm not sure why it didn't show. Uh, but this is the internship responsibilities. So obviously, you meet with a supervisor. I do. I ask whether you want to meet biweekly or weekly. Um, it's all up to you. It all depends on the every every. Every student is different, right? Um, and they do, they need live, live, different level of um, uh, supervisor. So it really depends on you if you want to meet weekly or bi-weekly. Um, but you are expected to lead circle time. So what that is, uh, and right now we're not doing it because we don't have an intern. Um, but you're supposed to present an activity or a question um, for the group before uh, before going into groups to you know before they go into tutoring. Um, it's just a way for us to basically wake up the kids and um, get to know the kids and get to know each other. Um, I like to participate all the time because it's always fun. So, uh, well, if you, if, you, if you guys make it fun, but yeah. And then you um, assist the grant fellow, uh, manage the tutoring program. Um, so you would make sure that the volunteers are signing in. You make sure that the parents are signing in. If the parents have any questions, you can, you know, you can forward that to me or another staff member. Um, I always encourage researching best practices for, uh, for like, what can we do better for the after school program, but also for circle time um, and data. Data is a big issue. It takes a lot of my time. So that's something that I always need help with, um, especially cleaning it up because even that can take a lot of time. And we wanna make sure we, we are keeping track of how many students we have, how many volunteers, um, and if, if anybody's absent or anything like that. Um, community outreach is something that I really heavily emphasize. This is something that we started this year, finally. Um, so it was a goal post COVID. I mean, we're not done with COVID, but at least uh, we'll do, but now that we're back. Um, and what you guys will do along with other staff members, including the grad fellows and student workers, is distribute our, basically our marketing materials to other programs uh, about our programs and services to schools, but also if there's a lot of schools here um, and other um, nonprofits. Um, so it will serve as a chance for you to connect with other local um, nonprofits, but also to see and see what they do, but also to connect with our office um, and make sure that we're helping as many people as possible. The other thing is social media. It's a lot of work, believe it or not. Um, so that's something that a fellow always need help with. So yeah, any questions? Or do we leave that towards the end, Catherine? I don't know. If people have questions specific to Hands to Help, feel free to ask them now. Um, I'm curious, you know, last year you had interns through the pandemic and you were all remote. And I'm curious, you know, what that experience was yeah. like and what the transition has been like going from completely remote all of last year, pretty much, right? Yeah. To, yeah, the entire year. Yeah, to having um, the kids back in the program. So they're back because of the distribution that we, we did at the beginning of the semester. We're getting a lot of kids from the public school, mm -hmm. uh, which is exactly what we wanted because public schools need help right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really happy to see so many new families coming in. Um, and so last year, everything was virtual. So we had a good amount of kids, but not as much as we do when we when we are in person right it was really tough for the kids um but the tutors it, it honestly required a little bit more work at least at least uh, on the computer because they had to type how every session went um and they had to give feedback and all of that and that's exactly what i want but it's easier when it's in person you can just tell me right so if something went wrong um but they loved it um, one of them even tried to come back, but obviously that she needs to continue um, going in other um, areas. But um, so this year, like we are in person, so hopefully we're not put back, but 
in case that we do, we are prepared because we did it last year and the engines did a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can go back if anything, but we are in person and we have a lot of kids. That's great. And I would say, I, I really like to share this students because the students feedback that were there they felt really like they were part of the team which was so nice because they felt really integrated into the team at hands to help and that they could be creative and think of ideas and um they were really integrated into that so the when you had students that were there in person they felt that but even remote they felt that so i think that's really special about the program that they do feel like they're really part of the team, which is great. Mm -hmm. great. Yes. So if people have any questions, um, keep them in mind for Lizbeth and we can um, move on to our next presenter, um, Roxanne from Hopeful Journeys. Um, I'm going to put you in the spotlight so we can see you. Um, so welcome. Um, Thank you. And Hopeful Journeys, I don't think, at least for psychology, we haven't connected in terms of internships. So this would be, this is a new experience for Merrimack students, so I'm very excited to hear from you. Yes, thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. I am the Human Resource and Operations Director for Hopeful Journeys. Uh, we're located in Beverly, Massachusetts, um, right on Toza Road, which is pretty close to 128. It's pretty accessible. Um, and what we are, we are a private special education school. Uh, we work with students between the ages of 3 and 22 who are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Um, our student population has been what's called outplaced from their public school district of origin. So they have sort of um, exhausted the uh, special education resources within their district and just haven't made significant enough gains academically, socially, behaviorally, and really just need a more structured individualized setting. Um, and that's what we do. Um, what we utilize for our um, skill acquisition programming as well as behavior programming is all kind of um, facilitated by ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis. So um, that's often why we interface a lot with psychology students at other universities and colleges in the area. Um, ABA is uh, very um, I think multifaceted and multifunctional um, therapy and teaching methodology. Um, that being said, it is used quite um, frequently for autism spectrum disorder. Um, our environment is applying it in an academic um, environment. So it is a little bit unique in that you get to run academic programming, but you also are focusing on things such as social skills, um, independent living skills, ADA, ADLs, um, you're running programming centered around speech pathology, occupational therapy. So it gives you sort of a well-rounded opportunity to practice ABA. Um, our students, we have 112, that's our maximum capacity. So it is sort of a mid-sized special ed school. Um, and the students that we work with can be quite, um, diverse with regards to their profile. So we have a lot of students who are uh, nonverbal and they might be using um, communication devices to communicate their needs. We have students that may be um, highly verbal and maybe they're working on um, behavior modification um, and then really everything in between. So for us, um, in terms of internships, what we do is um, it really is dependent on the students, um, the type of internship the student needs to engage in. Oftentimes, we have students that join us for semester long internships where, you know, they're spending a lot of time with us um, for a whole semester. And what we do with those students is um, we train them in the exact same capacity. We would train all of our new um, staff. So you would go through ABA training, autism training, how to run all different types of ABA programs, how to collect data. You would go through behavior management training, um, crisis de-escalation training, um, and then you would actually be placed on a team and be 
trained to work individually with the students on that team and you would get to practice what you learned. Um, and we have a couple of teams that we typically will place interns within um, and they're teams that give you that well-rounded sort of experience without having you jump right into maybe some of the more pervasive intensive behaviors that we can see um, with some of our students. So it really is a very hands-on opportunity. Um, in addition to that, if we have students that are able to work um, and that they have an internship, but then they're also looking to retain some hours, even if they're very part-time after, um, what we'll do is be able to hire you as a paid intern. So you can come out, come on, um, go through all of the training, um, satiate your internship up, you know, obligations. And then you can also, as it fits into your class schedule, continue on in a part-time capacity and be able to earn um, some extra money while, while learning some really great stuff. So it is, it is a very hands-on opportunity. Um, we oftentimes have students that come on board and then once they graduate, they work with us full-time and we have a tuition reimbursement program for um, grad programs in ABA and severe special education. So we often have folks that start as an undergraduate student, stay on and then become graduate students with us. So it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, that's great. I think there's a big interest in ABA among some of the, the students that I've met with. So that's um, definitely something I think will pique people's interest. Um, again, if people have questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I will um, read them out. Um, one question um, is, from me is, I'm curious sort of the best times to get in touch. So will, you know, students are sort of eventually in October, November, starting to do registration. And if they take the internship course in the spring, um, they'll need to secure that internship placement. So when would be the best time to be in touch with you? And this is sort of, I can ask Elizabeth the same question, but I'll be asking everybody the same question. Um, but that's, I'm curious, you know, when the best time would be. Yeah, I mean, I think that as long as you reach out with enough time for me to be able to interview with you, tour the, the school, really get a good sense of what the job, the internship job would entail. And then also we do some background checking. So we would do um, a quarry and then fingerprinting just because we are um, we're regulated by DESE in the same way public school districts are. So we do have that requirement, which all in all, it probably takes about three weeks, I would say maximum. So as long as you would, I would say a month in advance um, at minimum, but certainly could reach out anytime before that as well. Great. And that's a good consideration, I think, for students. A lot of times when they're working in different organizations, they need to make sure to leave that space for the background checks to happen. So that's a good thing to think about. Um, and what, um, what, is the typical number, I guess, of interns that you have? I'm curious, sort of, would they be able to interact with other interns and what that looks like? Yeah, um, right now we have eight paid interns. Um, so they are, three of them are just staying for the fall semester and then they're gonna be moving on. Um, they could potentially come back in the summer. And then the remainder of them are satiating their internship requirements, but then will be staying on with us um, after that is over. So we do have a lot of capacity right now. We are a one-to-one -one based school primarily. So one teacher for every one student. Um, there are instances across school where we might have like pairs or small groups depending on the student. So there is a very, um, there's a large amount of staff to really help us to groom interns and give them the support that they need. So um, we do have a, a pretty, a pretty wide number of, of available options. That's great, that's great, excellent. All right, well, if people have questions, put them in the chat, but thank you so much. This was so great to hear about Hopeful Journeys. Thank you. So, okay, so next we have Linda from Shed Children's Campus. Linda, welcome. Oh, wow, thank you for having me. 
So good to be here. Um, so my name is Linda Schatz Bouchard. I'm the executive director of Shed Children's Campus. We're located right on um, in Andover, Mass, on the Phillips Academy campus. It's a beautiful location. We have over two acres of land. A lot of our programming is in the great outdoors, especially during the pandemic. We were uh, almost like the sound of music where we had many kids and many trees throughout our campus. So it, it was uh, fabulous. And we got to really play and experiment with that, the great outdoors. Um, our campus has, um, we have about 200 children on our campus ranging um, taught from toddlers all the way up to school age, about seventh grade. Uh, we have five pillars, which are uh, Reggio Emilia philosophy, which is an Italian based philosophy where we meet the child where they're at um, and really do great observations and um, we're researchers and we kind of adapt curriculums that then match that child in their learning styles and with their interest. It's, um, it's a beautiful, you're interested to take a look at it. You can go onto our website. It gives you a little more information about the Reggio Amelia philosophy. We also practice mindfulness every day with our children, nature, gardens, and the community. So the five pillars um, are just basically we live and breathe them every day with our children as um, an educational child care program. Uh, we truly believe in the whole child, and that's how we basically approach our day. And it also it's important as a team in, in folks that all are a part of our campus and a part of our culture that um, we really take the time. Uh, we take, we're very intent about taking time, breathing and, and, and navigating dur during our day. Um, I just wanna make sure, I want to hit upon all the, all the little, spots here. Um, I could tell you a little bit about our interns. We have five interns this year, um, and I believe we had three last year. So last year was very different. Uh, we were all remote last year. So our, la um, our, our interns from last year were really taking a look at uh, children and anxiety in school age, um, in school age care. Um, so they were all learning remote um, and they were here on the campus. So I would say last year's interns really took a deep dive during a pandemic and really, um, really got to see what anxiety was looking like for school age children as they were trying to navigate remote learning. This year is a little different. They're back at school. Um, and so again, we're going from toddler programs all the way up to school age. They're in person and um, we are still watching anxiety because the, the other piece that we're looking at is um, age uh, development, the development of the children. They're not really hitting the markers that they had pre-pandemic. So we're really looking at um, the social, emotional, how they're handling. We're also noticing a high conflict during this year, uh, more so like how do we belong in a community? We're spending a lot of time. How do how how can we be a part of this community? How can we communicate e effectively, efficiently, and really? Um, kindness. I know we've been really articulating on kindness. What does that all look like? So this year's interns, um, they are just getting to know us and we're beginning to having some of these conversations. We'll probably be meeting them. Um, I think they're meet, starting to meet them this week and really articulating exactly what's the direction and what's the deep dive that they want to do. Um, I am going to mention a little bit because I'm super curious as a leader. I've been a leader in nonprofits for over 30 years, and I'm super interested in the IFS system, internal family systems um, in nonprofits. So I have signed up for a, um, a course this fall, and I'm really looking at um, how, do we, how do we apply this IFS systems in a nonprofit because as adults, we're all bringing our pieces and parts with us. And it's like, how do we, how do we find the language? How do we talk to one another um, and, 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 and 
building that really safe environment. And with that, I see it also um, trickling out to our children and families also. I'm trying to think, I think I hit, um, okay, and then the process. So pretty much the process would be for, for folks to contact uh, myself, can send me an email, that's how we've been doing it, um, and what your interest would be. I also invite um, the students to come onto campus because I think our campus really speaks for itself. It's just a beautiful place to be, um, and we take a tour, and I also, um, really connect with the um, interns, like what are your interests? And, and it, much like the Reggio Amelia philosophy, we treat, you know, with our interns, we're trying to, what makes you tick? What's going to fulfill your internship, you know, um, needs and wants uh, being a part of us. So it's, it's, it's been great. I have to say that I'm loving this year's interns. We, we have a great crew. We have five this year. Um, and then we start processing and we do lots of check-ins. So I think I hit all the questions. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Again, if students You're welcome. Have a question, please pop them in. Um, but thank you. That's great. And I will say, um, you know, it's it's nice because I feel like more students, you kind of get more students each semester that are interested, <laughs> which is really, really fun. And I think allows for them to be creative too. And sort of I, I like that idea that they're able to bring their ideas and talk through what's happening currently for the kids that they're seeing. So I think that's great. Yeah. Great. Right. All right. So we next have uh, Caitlin Little, who is from Arts in Reach. So I, hello. Hello. I'm going to highlight you so we can see you. There we go. All right. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Caitlin Little. I'm the Community Outreach and Business Development Vista at Arts and Reach. So I'm a little bit new. So forgive me if I feel like I'm looking off of notes a lot, but i um, excited to be here to represent Arts and Reach. Um, we have been around since 1997, empowering teenage girls and gender expansive youth uh, through the greater seacoast. Uh, we do innovative mentoring and arts programming. So they're usually after school and vacation programs. All of our services are free of charge, and that includes transportation to and from sites. Uh, we like to build programs that create a community where teens feel safe to express themselves, building confidence, taking on challenges, and that's all done through the arts. Uh, our programming ranges from like two and 3D art to music performance, um, theatrical performance, and creative writing. So um, we have a bunch of different programming and it kind of switches up depending on who our teaching artists are. Um, We're an organization that is really trying to help um, these teens develop and set life goals, increase literacy, increase critical thinking skills, uh, build stronger, more confident relationships, um, building those conflict resolution, resolution skills, excuse me, um, gaining knowledge and understanding of the arts and cultural expression, being able to expose them to um, artistic spaces and artists that they may not uh, have otherwise had an opportunity to uh, identify with. Um, Volunteer and service the community to demonstrate the potential of youth uh, and to create that sort of um, giving environment to the future. Um, so as far as internship opportunities, uh, they could look like a lot of different things. Um, we have traditionally uh, worked with our interns to create uh, a program that works for them based on what their interests are, um, what they might need for particular classes. But um, some things that we have done in the past were um, we have the opportunity to learn about nonprofit structure, uh, it's operations, interactions with the community, uh, collecting or analyzing data, or uh, potentially doing your own research project that would involve, you know, collecting and analyzing data, um, understanding and analyzing creative therapies with girls and gender expanded, expansive youth. Um, you can learn about the diverse populations that uh, AIR serves. Understanding creative curriculum, um, both building and planning those curriculums, um, gaining leadership skills and experience through working with underserved youth. Um, learning to create marketing and communication materials for education, fundraising, awareness, kind of anything within the nonprofit sector, we can focus on that as well. Um, and but also um, assisting in community volunteer and mentorship programs. So uh, taking on some leadership um, responsibilities there would be another thing. So um, that's kind of it. I have a short and sweet um, gig <laughs> for you. Um, if you're interested, I can drop, I'll put this in the 
in the chat, but we have this impact report kind of talking about the impact that um, Arts and Reach has on the Seacoast teams that we serve. Let me pull up in the chat. Um, it's called the Making an Impact Report. So I'll share that with y'all if you wanna take a look at that. That kind of gives you a better insight of who we serve and the sort of outcomes that we're seeing. Um, if you're interested in connecting with us further, if you have any questions or are interested in taking us on as an uh, internship opportunity, you can go ahead, I'm gonna put this in the chat too, go to info at Arts and Reach. Um, just make sure in the subject title, you say something like Merrimack College uh, internship. Um, you can go ahead and include uh, maybe what you might be interested in doing, um, or at least send us your resume so that we can start to get a feel for who you are and what you might be interested in doing. Um, and if you just want to learn more about Arts and Reach in general, I'm going to drop that in the chat too. You can just check out our website, uh, artsandreach.org. Um, as far as best times to get a hold of us, I would say probably a couple months out so we can make sure that we get interviews and get all of our ducks in a row. Um, our offices are located in Newcastle, um, New Hampshire, which is a little island south of Portsmouth. Um, when we are in office, we're mostly in the office Monday through Friday, but um, a lot of our programming, like I said, is after school and vacation work. So that might include some evenings or weekend hours, uh, depending on the nature of your internship. So thank you so much. And we hope to connect with y'all soon. Great, thank you. So, we have one more person who's not yet with us. I know they were going to be a little bit later, but I had um, a, a question for everyone here in terms of our guests. Um, I'm curious, you know, what types of students sort of fit best at your sites? Um, because I think that, you know, every site is offer something very different and sort of very specialized. Um, and I'm curious, you know, from your experience, what, and it's hard to sort of narrow down a type of student, but what are, what are the characteristics or qualities that you've seen most successful, I think, in interns that you've had? I think for us, uh, making sure folks are aligned with, uh, uh, the creative expression within the arts, uh, with helping uh, both teens, both girls and gender expansive youth, I think would be really uh, just kind of key things I would be interested in. That would include um, maybe like gender studies, psychology, um, nonprofit management. Those are all sort of things that fall into our wheelhouse. Um, we love people who are flexible and creative and really passionate about the girls we serve because um, it's really important to us to create great programming for them. Um, and kind of inspire them to the next level. So, and that would be, I'll be all doing that too. That's great. I think keywords I'm looking at too are the flexibility and creativity and coming with sort of a passion and knowledge of something that you want to work on, which is important because I think some students have that sort of idea and others might need a little bit more structure and direction to start. So I think there's, a you know, the students that have that will be automatically drawn to that experience. So that's, I think that's very helpful to hear. What about um, Roxanne from your perspective for Hopeful Journeys? So I, I would agree with the word flexible. Every day is very different. And um, sometimes we plan to do X and it ends up being Y and Z by the end of the day. Um, but I also think that somebody who has a passion for the autism community um, and really understands that their um, it understands, but also I think more importantly has a desire to understand how ABA uh, works and why, the why behind what happens every day, including some of the behavioral expression we see from our students, why our interventions are what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, it can also, it can seem a little unnatural until you understand what ABA is and what it seeks to do. So I think somebody who is inquisitive, somebody who has um, a, a real passion and connection to the autism community, somebody who can be flexible. And then the last piece is somebody who is very dependable um, because the internship comes with direct interaction with students and really working with them one-on-one. -on -one. Rapport building is extremely important for it to be successful mutually for the student, for your students as well as my students. So without that dependability and presence on site, um, that rapport is, is a real challenge to be built, especially when it's a, 
um, you know, a, a short sort of semester long opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. That's great. That's really, really helpful. And what about Linda from your perspective? All the above what you're just, I, I think it, it would be a beautiful um, recipe. I also want to add curiosity. I love when the students and interns come in and they're just so curious and, and just watching them lighting up and just watching them, you know, really taking in the experience and taking it serious and really feeling that they can make a difference. And, um, yeah, and having those conversations because they're so um, meaningful and they can have such an impact on our organization also. It has us even questioning um, some of their observations when we're talking, like I think specifically last year, when we were talking about anxiety and the anxiety in children with a first grader, a second grader, and then that impact and, and really what are some of the tools, techniques, or methods to uh, that. Um, children can leave here every day with so yeah they, they can make truly can make a difference in a child's life great thank you and i'm also curious i know um i know roxanne and linda both have meetings uh, shortly um but i was hoping also to hear from each of you all three of you um you know what is it that you like best about where you work. I think it's, I like hearing, you know, from the agencies and organizations, what is it that you enjoy about the work that you do? Because I think that gives students insight into what might attract them to, um, to you as well. Um, so I'm, I'm curious sort of um, what those pieces are that really make you excited about where you where you're working and made you want to come and represent you know that that organization today um so whoever would like to jump in sure um so i think for me i've been in the hr field for and operations for many many years over 20 years and i've never not worked for a service agency i started off in nonprofit. um DCF funded programming and then found my way into ABA probably about uh, 10 or so years ago. And I think the thing that drew me in and the thing that keeps me so engaged is like the progress that you see and how effective and impactful it is, um, the practice of ABA. It to me is extremely fascinating to see students who start with us who have no functional communication, completely nonverbal, and within a year's time are speaking in full sentences, able to completely uh, manned for what they want, have meaningful conversations, to be able to see the parents who are at times questioning if their student will ever, if their child will ever be able to talk to them, to say mom, to say dad, to say sister, to say brother, and then see their reactions when their students are, are going so far beyond that, that they, they, they're just floored. So for me, it's the impact, the effectiveness of what we do. I also really love to meet with people who are so excited and then get them in place, whether it be an intern or a staff member, and then check in with them in a month and have them be like, you'll never guess what happened. You'll never guess what this student did. You'll never guess. And just seeing that fit, it's like the magical fit when you find somebody who's right for the position and they love it and they get the mission. And it's just, um, that's my favorite part in general. That's great. Thank you. And I love hearing the perspective too from someone who's working with the on the HR side of things because you're still so connected. And we have a lot of psychology students who are interested in human resources. And I think also hearing that how there's you're still such an integral part of the organization and that, you know, finding someone that feels like they really fit and that excitement is really, really great. So thank you. That was excellent to hear. Um, what about from you, Linda? I think it's it's truly the joy of working with children every day. It's just, it's magical. It, you just, every day is a different day. And um, 
it has me continuing coming back every day. It's the joy of being with children, that magic, that spark, um, and also the educators that I get to work with side by side um, is, is, it's unbelievable. And I would say for this organization also, it's the ability of bringing your whole self to work. So if you are interested in, so I'm also a yoga instructor. So I get to, I get to show up and do yoga with, as an executive director, I get to go to yoga with my kids, you know? So, um, so we really encourage whoever, um, is, is a part of our team, it is that, that you bring your whole self and share your, your skills in, in love uh, with, with others. And it really, it's a beautiful ripple effect. Absolutely. Great, thank you. And Caitlin, you're newer to the organization, right? Yes, but I actually, so I moved myself across the country to come work for uh, Arts and Reach. I used to live in Nebraska, but now I live in Dover, New Hampshire. Okay. Um, so if that doesn't speak to the organization, I don't know what does. Um, I was really excited. So in, in my previous life, I had run an arts, a DIY arts org uh, and volunteered at another um, kind of femme-centered uh, creative org. And it was kind of the best of both worlds for me to be able to um, come and do education and expressive therapies with um, femme and gender expansive youth. Um, I was really excited to be like the person that I like needed when I was like a young person uh, and seeing the direct impact that we have on the youth as they're growing up and making decisions. And, you know, one of our uh, air alum is on our board now who went through our air programming, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, I just got done reading all the evaluations for our summer programming and some were like, so one, one of the questions is what I was like before and after participating in air. And one of them was just a drawing of, of, of a person like getting rained on. And then the second one was like another person holding an umbrella for them. So it was like, mm-hmm. so, you know, being able to see directly that, you know, we're empowering the next generation to yeah. feel safe, uh, to express themselves creatively in, I don't know, working in that way and connecting the dots between them and the community uh, mm-hmm. and their identities, I think is really, really important. And, um, like I said before, I was a lot more in the arts and did a lot of advocacy work, trying to connect the, the idea that like the arts are essential. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just a luxury anymore. And there are so many ways uh, in which we consume the arts that I think is essential to our, our emotional and, uh, you know, just physical well-being. So, you know, if you watch Netflix, you're supporting the arts. If you go to a museum, you're supporting the arts. If you, you know, donate money to somewhere, you're supporting the arts. So I think that's really important. So thank you. That's great. And it's nice. It's a nice perspective too, to hear from you because you, you are new, but you're, this is why you wanted to join. And so that's, what's really great to, to hear. And I think it's good for students to hear also what the motivation is and the real personal passion behind it. So that's great. Thank you. So um, we have Carolyn Jackson here. Thank you for joining. Um, she's um, from Cedardale um, Health and Fitness. And I believe is Beth joining also? I think she was going to try. They were in the middle of the after school program. So she was going to try to hop on if she could. Okay. So if you, um, we've just sort of talked with our other Yes, so if you'd like to speak a little bit about um, Cedardale, that would be great. Sure. So um, I'm one of the owners of Cedardale. We've been in business for, um, we're just going on our 50th year. So we have um, a lot of different aspects to our business. Our uh, primary business is the health and fitness industry. Um, but we also have many aspects of um, fun and fit recreational activities as well. Mm -hmm. So we're located on about 44 acres in Haverhill. Um, We have a main fitness facility, which is located on one side of the street, and that houses everything that you would typically think of in a gym or fitness facility. Um, Everything from group exercise to pools and aquatics, 
to tennis, to personal training. Um, and we also run an outdoor facility that's open um, two and a half months out of the year with outdoor recreational programs, with um, a swim team and tennis lessons and the spray grounds and um, kind of caters to people who are looking for fun and fit um, summer activities. So a big part of that aspect of our business is also wellness programs. And it's something that we're trying to get um, more heavily into, uh, especially with everything we've been through as a business with our members, with our employees going through um, COVID and recovering from mm -hmm. that. So we've seen our members dealing with a lot of challenges and we've talked um, extensively with Katie. Katie's on our wellness advisory board. Um, so we have a wellness advisory board that consists of physicians and chiropractors and mental health professionals, um, physical therapists, a couple folks from Merrimack College. Um, and what we do is we try to work with them to gather insight as to what does the community need when it comes to wellness programs. And there's been such a huge, huge emphasis on mental health um, over the past year and a half, two years, especially. And what we want to try to do is become, um, you know, sort of a central location in the Merrimack Valley for folks who are seeking out wellness programs that not only improve their fitness, but also their mental health. So um, that can range from a healthy living program to a Parkinson's program to a fall prevention program to folks who are just looking to get out of the house and be able to socialize um, with people in a healthy way and a fit way. So um, we're even, you know, starting to talk about things like what can we do in our junior tennis programs to help alleviate anxiety and stress for the young people who've been cooped up, haven't had a healthy outlet. Um, so we're really looking to explore and expand in, in a lot of different areas. And then the other major part of our business is located across the street and in our Cedar Land facility. So we have things like mini golf and batting cages and that kind of thing. But we also house a um, aquatic center, an amazement center. And we run um, during COVID, we did a remote learning program through there. Um, and now that we're back to a little bit more normalcy, we run an after school program as well as a very extensive summer camp, a fit and fun camp. And some of the feedback that we have received from our camp direct director and camp counselors is that um, the young people who are participating in these programs, they've seen a real change in terms of a lot more behavioral issues that they have to deal with. Kids are just kind of struggling in a lot of different ways and it's been a challenge for um, our employees and our directors who, who run these programs. And it's even an additional challenge because they also have an added layer of dealing with parents that are just really struggling with how do they help their child who's kind of acting out, who's lost those social connections. And um, one of them said to me the other day, it's almost like I need to go out and, and get training on how to be a counselor because that's what I'm doing a lot um, of the day with kids and parents who are struggling. So that had led Katie and I to talk about maybe a possible um, internship um, that we're still kind of figuring out and we're looking in all different areas, but one that might be an individual or a couple of individuals who could assist us in our after school program or maybe even possibly our summer camp. and focus on what could we do to provide more programs for kids to deal with their stress and anxiety and maybe compile some resources for parents um, who are struggling as well. So this is new to us. We've never had um, a psychology intern in the past. We have had other interns from Merrimack College and it's worked out really well. So we're kind of open to explore um, different activities and uh, if Beth is able to pop on, maybe 
in the next few minutes, she could explain a little bit more about the after school program um, and what's involved, but it, it really runs from the bus drops off at about 3.30 and it runs to um, about 6.30 in the evening. So kids can choose a um, couple days or some kids come five days a week and it varies and they participate in different activities as well as have some time for um, homework and studying. So um, I think the last thing I'll, I'll say and is just that um, Katie said it was okay to do this. So we also have a variety, you know, for folks who are in college and looking for maybe part-time work um, and you wanna get a little exposure to the fitness or wellness industry. Um, we have several, you know, openings for part-time employment now um, across the street in our after school program, as well as, um, you know, lifeguards, swim instructors, uh, people to work in our kids zone um, fit center at the main club, even reception um, mm -hmm. positions. And we're also looking for a tennis, um, a young tennis individual who might be able to um, work with youngsters in some of the programs we talked about. So um, that's my plug <laughs> for Cedardale. Um, happy to answer any questions that folks might have. Sure. Yeah. If people have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I think it's interesting. We have some students also that have um, health science and psychology, either double majors or one's a major and one's a minor. So I can see that also as a nice fit to sort of be exposed to the health science piece, but also the wellness piece and really looking at it holistically, which is great. Um, so I will ask you a question actually that I had asked um, the other uh, guests, which was, um, you know, I love to hear what people like about their work and where they work and what is it that, you know, makes them excited to be doing the work that they're doing. Um, so I think that's nice for students to hear too. So I'm curious sort of from your perspective, what are the things that make you excited about? working at Cedardale and being there and being involved in that community. Yeah, I think the best thing about working at Cedardale is that um, number one, you're working with, with a group of individuals or a team of individuals, and every single one of them is passionate about the role that they play in the club and how it ultimately helps people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything that we do with our programs, with what we offer at the club is all about helping people achieve a better quality of life, whatever that might be for them. So it could be for, you know, someone in our fall prevention program, just helping them become more independent, building their confidence, um, and being able to get together with a group of people who share, share the same fear of falling and losing their independence. And, um, you know, we're passionate about that. We're passionate about helping people just, you know, keep improving their mobility, um, their quality of life, their fitness level so that they're able to enjoy life. Um, for many of our other wellness programs, it might, um, you know, really affect a health risk factor. Uh, so many people come through our door doors that have struggled with obesity or diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, and they participate. Many of them have such success in a healthy living program where, you know, after several weeks, they may be able to get off a cholesterol medication or a high blood pressure medication. Um, or just be able to get around and move so much more easily. Um, so I think it's, that's the best thing about um, working at Cedardale and in our industry is that you're just, you constantly have an opportunity to impact somebody's life in a positive way. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And I've appreciated, you know, as, as talking with you as part of the, um, well, the wellness advisory board, just that that awareness of the integration of mental health and how it all really 
comes together and plays a part in wellness and motivation too. So um, I saw it as a great chance, you know, for students to integrate. And so hopefully we'll be able to do some more of that. So thank you. Sure. So um, I'm going to give students a chance to ask questions. I um, just want to say thank you. I know some of our guests had to leave for other meetings, but thank you so much to, to those that are here. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I especially love hearing just about your own feelings about the organizations you're working with, because I think that speaks a lot to um, really the, the qualities that students are looking for as they go out and find an internship to get some really meaningful experience. So um, I am going to just share, I'm gonna share my screen one more time just to give um, a little bit more information. So for, you know, for students who um, are looking to do an internship and if there are um, agencies they heard from today that they're really interested in, please um, feel free to be in touch with me and I can help connect you um, as well. And also um, I'll have information up on the um, undergraduate internship website. Um, and one, I do like to just let students know um, what the expectations are in terms of internships, um, you know, from our side on campus. I will say that sometimes, um, agencies might require a little bit more of you. And that's something that you can talk with about what those um, responsibilities are and what those um, expectations are. But from our side at Merrimack, we expect students to work with their internship site for a minimum of eight to 10 hours a week. Um, but like I said, the site may require more um, time than that. Um, and you're also taking a course on campus that meets once a week. Um, and you're expected to be at your internship for at least 10 weeks. Um, the semester itself is longer than 10 weeks. So we, uh, we allow for some if some start a little bit slower, but we're hoping you can really hit the ground running and you're there for at least 10 weeks, but hopefully more um, and really there for the entire semester. The class itself provides some really nice support um, and really group supervision um, and discussion on internship related topics. So you'll have an instructor who is really guiding those conversations and you're able to talk with peers about your experiences. And that does two things. For one, it gives you support. So if you're experiencing challenges or you're having any struggles, you can really talk through those things and get some help and support and ideas and, um, and ways to sort of find solutions with your classmates and your instructor. Um, but what else it, it does, which I, I love, is it also gives you an idea of what other internship opportunities are out there. So you're hearing week after week from your peers about what they're experiencing at their internship site. So it gives you more information about what else you may want to try next or what other things might be interesting and exciting for you. Um, so that's a real benefit of the course itself is you're not only isolated in your own experience, but you're really hearing and experiencing sort of things vicariously through others as well. And you're sharing your information with them. So everybody really benefits. Um, I also wanna make sure I put in a plug um, because next week on Wednesday, we're having a student led internship discussion also held um, via Zoom. Um, but that is a favorite event of mine because the students who are currently um, experiencing an internship, they're doing their internship this semester, they are gonna share about that experience. So they'll talk with you about the agency that they're a part of and give you a little background about um, that ag those agencies. So SHED, um, which Linda represented today, we have students next week that will talk about SHED, but also give their perspective on what it's like to be an intern there. So you'll hear directly from your peers about those internship experiences um, and what you might expect to do there or some things you could anticipate experiencing there. Um, so that's a really nice event because you're hearing directly from students and also talk through a little bit about the process and about 
what you need to be doing to prepare yourself for an internship um, and also get some advice from students who are um, you know, taking similar courses to you and having similar experiences and hear from them about what they would recommend or um, things that really helped them prepare um, and feel ready. Um, and I will also add that both this internship fair and the one we had last week, um, we have the videos and we'll be posting those. So if there are pieces you missed or if there are information you wanna revisit, you'll be able to access that information as well. All right. So lastly, again, I just want to thank those who um, joined us today from their um, organizations to share with the students. And thank you to the students who came to learn. I think it's a great benefit to you all to have a, an idea of what's out there um, and take advantage of an internship opportunity. So I hope that you learned something and you have something to take away from today. And again, if, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to answer them. And I just wanna say thank you very much and um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.